Hello, um, so this week in my um, weekly newsletter that I send to my community, um, I have been doing an Ask Me Anything, um, and this is something that I may continue. So um, if you, so in the notes below this video, if you would like to subscribe to my mailing list, then please do. Um, so basically I sent an email saying, ask me anything and I will um, answer your questions with a video. So here I am. So I had a question from Sam and she says, I'm going to read out her question and then speak to it. Dear Lindsay, thank you for taking my question. I read recently about being hypervigilant for certain emotions. I see that I do this with anxiety. I have struggled for many years with anxiety and I'm scared to let myself feel anxious. And so I continuously check in with how I'm feeling. I sense that this isn't helpful, but I feel really stuck with scanning for, for anxiety. Can you speak to this? Can you help? Thank you, Sam. So this is a great question and is something that I have noticed within myself and also I notice in a lot with other people. I think it's something that's very common. So what Sam is talking about here in terms of being hypervigilant is that that's really kind of just being very aware of something when it occurs and or scanning for something to see if it's there or to check if it's coming um, or just to check in with how we're feeling. So we can do this with um, our emotions so we can get hyper vigilant to how am I feeling. So this is Sam's experience and I've had this experience too. How am I feeling? Is, what's that little bit of nervousness? Is that nervous? Is, is that going to turn into anxiety? Is that anxiety? Is that here? Or some people can do it with um, another very common one is depression. Or oh, I feel a bit low. Does that mean that I'm going to get really depressed again? Or um, anger also is another one that people can really struggle with um, if, if they've had anger issues in the past. And then they feel themselves getting a bit angry. They get very hyper vigilant, very hyper alert to I'm feeling angry. I don't want to feel angry. This is not an emotion that's OK for me. People can also get very hyper vigilant about body symptoms, particularly if they struggle with like health anxiety. So scanning for, oh, am I feeling a bit unwell? What's that ache and pain? And just being very aware, really, of what is going through the body mind system. So in terms of anxiety, so particularly if I think this is particularly common for people who have struggled with something for a long time and either have seen something about it and are getting better from it or are just stuck in it. Um, and particularly with anxiety, people who maybe have had a lot of anxiety and then maybe that's once or twice has gone on to have a panic attack. They can get very hyper alert and vigilant for and aware of how am I feeling. Or again, if you've had a very depressive episode, that may lead you to then think, be very aware of how is my mood? Is it feeling low? So on one level, this is quite a natural, not a natural, but it's a quite a normal and common response when we've struggled with a particular emotion. Or we feel that we have a label that we have a difficulty with this emotion. So like we are labelled with depression or generalised anxiety disorder or health anxiety or social anxiety or driving anxiety, whatever the label is, um, or that we have, as I said, anger issues. So it can really seem that that's something that we need to pay attention to. And on one level, it's quite logical. So our brain, our mind, because the experience of those feelings in the past, so say anxiety has led to a panic attack or feeling low has led to a period of depression where you haven't been able to work or anger issues has meant that you've lashed out and been violent or that a relationship has ended because of your anger issues. To your brain and your mind, those things look like a threat. And really what we're talking about with hypervigilance is that our brain and our nervous system is turned up and tuned in in a much more acute way to a certain emotion or a certain physical sensation coming along. And so we've got a brain, a mind, a computer in our head that says that those experiences in the past with this emotion are not safe. It has led to things that have been unwanted um, have been issues, problems, whatever the label it is that the mind has given it. So consequently, your mind is now very 
uh, hyper aware, hyper alert to looking for these things. So I love how one of my teachers, Dr. Amy Johnson, talks about this. It's like our minds sit on the, so if you imagine that we're 10,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago, we're sitting on the savannah or the plain or in the field and we're in a tribe and we're looking out and we are scanning for danger. So we're scanning for, um, is there another tribe coming? Is the weather changing? Is what's that rustle in the bush? Is someone ill in the group? And we're gonna got an infectious disease going. So it's for proper threats. So this is where our brain and our, and our limbic system and our nervous system is doing. But today, and particularly if you're hypervigilant about certain emotions, your brain is sitting there and it's sitting on the savannah and it's scanning for, is that a little bit of anxiety? Is that a bit of depression? Is that a bit of anger? Is that a bit of jealousy? Is that a bit of codependence? Whatever it is that your thing is, your brain is sitting there and scanning for it because it looks like it's dangerous because it has had some consequences in the past. And so we're much more aware when it comes into our system. So um, how this can cause problems, as Sam has already identified, is that if you are an anxiety, and, and I've had this experience myself with anxiety, because that's where my mind will go if it wants to go anywhere, is that if the slightest bit of anxiety is felt, then we start to scan for it, we feel it, and then we clamp down on it because we don't want the experience to come. So either that being it leading to a panic attack or just feeling anxious, or if we get the slightest bit of anger, we clamp down on it because we don't, we don't trust ourselves in the reaction that we're gonna have, or we clamp down on the little bit of low mood because we're worried about it leading to a major depression, something like that. So we clamp down on it and then we don't feel it. And this in itself, I think, then creates a further problem because all of the anxiety, let's use anxiety as an example rather than we keep saying depression and anger, but let's just use anxiety as an example, is that you then clamp down on all of this anxiety and the anxiety then just keeps bubbling away rather than coming up and being felt and let go of or just letting it pass through. And I think that then once we're holding all the emotion in place, is sometimes when we can then get things like headaches or you know, muscle aches, or it starts to manifest in our physical body sometimes when we don't wanna let ourselves feel something because it doesn't look safe. So the first way out of this really is to notice that it's happening, to know that your mind is going to frame it in some way that it's not safe for you to feel this and to notice that there's a tendency to clamp down on it and not let yourself feel it. And I feel it's a bit like, you know, where you've got like a wellspring of something and you keep clamping on it and it keeps pushing up. But actually, if you just let yourself feel bits of it and just let yourself feel this emotion, then eventually it kind of empties out or, or certainly like the, the pocket of it empties out and then we've just got whatever passes through, like a bit more anxiety coming and just passing through. But that pocket that you haven't allowed yourself to feel is gradually able to be felt. So know that you're going to have a mind that's going to try and talk you out of feeling. It's going to try to tell you that this emotion isn't safe and start to see if you can question that in the process of then allowing yourself just to feel it and notice that it passes. So one of the mind's very clever tricks about this is to say that you will, it means you're going to get depressed. It means you're going to be anxious for a long period of time. It means you're going to be angry forever. It loves to talk in those ways, but that simply isn't true because we're only ever feeling our own thinking and that brings feelings with it and thinking is designed to change. There's no way that we can get stuck in it forever. Now, I know if you have been in a depression or in a chronic anxiety for a long time, that can be hard to hear. But even within that, there have been fluctuations, days, moments that are slightly better than others. So part of the knowing that it's safe as it arises, that once we've scanned for it and we've, we're scanning and we see that we feel a bit anxious, and then we know we're going to have a mind that's going to talk to us about how this isn't safe, but we can just relax and let that let ourselves feel it because we know that as our thinking changes, it's going to pass. And there's nothing we can do to actually hold it in place. Uh, so I'm just looking at my notes of other bits I wanted to mention. So another really helpful way to see when we've got this hypervigilance about certain emotions 
is to see the times when we don't do it. So for example, anger isn't something that I experience a huge amount. And, or, you know, that kind of like real kind of like ragey thing. So when I do feel angry, I just let myself feel it. I don't really have any judgment about it. Now in the past, when I felt a bit of anxiety rising, I would do the thing where like I'm vigilant for it, here it is, I clamp down on it. But if I feel another emotion or a low mood, because I haven't really suffered with depression, a low mood can come in. And I don't have any judgment about that. I, there's no story there my mind is making up about it. There's no meaning about what it means about me. If I feel low or if I feel angry, I just let myself feel those things. They pass on like, oh, okay, I feel angry. And they pass on through. Oh, my mood's a bit low. It passes on through. Whereas what Sam is talking about here is there's hypervigilance. Oh, there's, an, uh, there's this emotion that's the problem. The one I really don't want to feel that means something about me. That's the one I can't feel. So if you have this going on, it's really good to notice all the emotions that you do just let yourself feel. The ones that don't have a story attached to them, the ones that you don't judge yourself for. And to then start to question, well, what if this emotion that I'm hypervigilant about, this anxiety, depression or anger, what if that's exactly the same? Because truly it is. It's all emotion. It's all energy passing through. And we as human beings have given it labels. This certain feeling of energy is anger. This certain feeling of energy is depression. This certain feeling of, of energy is anxiety. But what if we can take away the label of it and just let ourselves feel the energy of it? So, all, so start to play with Find an emotion that you're just okay that you have, that you don't have a lot of thinking about, that you just let it come and go, and see if you can start to apply, apply it to, well, what if this emotion that I'm so frightened of, and, I really, and it means something about me if I have it, it means I'm not getting better, it means I'm not a good person, it means that I, uh, I shouldn't be struggling in this way, what if it's exactly the same as the thing that you're just not afraid to feel? That's a really big thing to see. See, because by doing that, what we're doing is we are stripping the emotion of the story, of the meaning that it has about us. So we're stripping it of, oh, I'm a depressed person. I can't believe this has come back. I thought I'd got over this. Or I am an anxious person. Um, I, I see other people are doing well. Why do I have this? We're stripping it of all of that story and meaning and just letting ourselves feel it and letting it pass on through. And then eventually, eventually what happens is the system, the nervous system and the mind start to quieten down about this and it, it, it becomes something that we're not hypervigilant to anymore. That's the possibility. Is that then, oh, here's some anxiety and it just passes on through. Here's a little worry, it passes on through. And then we can just get to feel it all and there's so much more freedom. And I think, you know, this is, this is why Sam, I would imagine, has asked this question is because she's aware that she knows there's more freedom on the other side of just, instead of just being totally on edge the whole time, nervous system ramped up, <gasps> am I going to feel this? And then also then holding it down and trying not to feel it and trying to just get on and pretend everything's okay, as opposed to letting go of scanning of, of it and then just allowing yourself to feel it. Because what if it doesn't mean anything about you? What if the fact that you feel anxiety or anger or depression or whatever it is, what if it means nothing about you? What if it's just some energy passing through? So have a think about that. I hope that uh, this was helpful, Sam, and to anyone else who has listened. So if you uh, would like to know when I release new videos, please subscribe to my channel. And also if you would like to join my mailing list where you can then ask me anything, um, then, um, please do. The link is in the notes below. You'll also receive a beautiful free ebook, Lessen Your Stress. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.